Hey there space cats and groovers of the universe, it's Jules here. Recently I asked you what's holding you back when making your first book and I had loads of replies so in today's video I will be addressing this issue and while we're having a chat about that I'm just making some bunnies under a moon, you know like you do. I went through many years, some might even call it a wilderness, a wasteland of nerves and worries, between writing my first book and publishing it. The idea was complete and I'd even had a major international publisher take it on, only to be withdrawn at a crucial moment. So I knew that the idea was solid but it took me years and years to get the confidence to make up the illustrations, settle the designs and the text and send it to be published through a print-on-demand service. That project later evolved into having it printed and taking it into schools, libraries, literary events and, well, all sorts of other things where I sold thousands of copies. I know what it feels like to be waiting for the right moment or wondering if it's good enough or if I've priced it right or if the illustrations are okay. So let's look at what you lovely lot are worried about. Ella's Cottage Company says they have fears of various kinds. I have several done or nearly done. Fears from colour schemes to irrational theft of my characters. I have many people ask me about copyright and theft of their material. It's really unlikely that anyone will do that, although it does happen. In the UK, when you make a mark on a piece of paper or on a screen, it is your copyright. The angle that you need to hold on to is that you need to be able to prove it should you need to. I'm by no means a world expert on copyright law but as I understand it you just need to make sure that you have proof that you wrote that story or you made that piece of art at that particular time. You can do this in several ways. You can copyright the article in your own country. You can make sure you have a timestamp on your computer file or my preferred old school method, you can put it in an envelope, sign across the sealed part of the envelope, cover that signature with sellotape and post it to yourself in the mail. That way you have a postmark date on the envelope with your work inside. You just have to make sure you don't open it by mistake and also put it somewhere safe and put on the envelope somewhere what the piece of work inside is. Make sure you check out copyright laws and how you can protect yourself in your own country. As to colour schemes, it's a good idea to try colours out on a piece of paper first. If you are working digitally, then it's really easy to change your colours if you don't like them. But if you're working IRL, in real life, then put some schemes together in your chosen medium. Believe me, making that decision now is much easier than deciding later they weren't right. Do some research on Instagram to see what colours look good together. Go 
Yourself for Granted says, Illustrating my book is taking so much longer than I thought it would. I realise that I need to plan and set weekly goals, otherwise I can spend hours on the tiniest details. Perfectionism and procrastination are evil twins. This is so true. When it seems like there is a huge mountain of work to be completed for your book, it's so hard to know where to start. It's much easier to put the washing on or give the cat some much needed attention. Or worst of all, fall into a scroll hole. The way to tackle this feeling of procrastination is to break it down into small tasks. I use a bullet journal for this, but you could use a notepad on your phone or even a scrap of paper and a pencil. Don't think of the project as a whole. Think of it as what you can realistically do today, obviously taking into account the washing and the cat duties for later on. If your work is detailed, then details are going to be important to your work. But if you are writing a chapter of your book and you are deliberating over which word to use to describe the colour of the sky, then just put a placeholder text in there until you are inspired by that correct word. I use three capital X's and highlight them in bold so I don't miss them later on. And the same applies to artwork and design. If you can't think of the right thing and you are taking more than a couple of minutes over this decision, then come back to it if you can. Michelle Blackman says, I feel like I have so many ideas, but struggle with starting. Maybe if there were templates, it could help. Also, not sure what age group I would like to target. Ugh, starting. My lovely uncle Ron was a terrific artist and we used to share many conversations about our work. One day he told me his secret weapon when not knowing where to start. He said, it's called make a bloody mark on a piece of paper. It made me laugh. He was so straightforward and unambiguous. Just start somewhere, he was saying. Having a blank piece of paper or a screen in front of you can be so off-putting. But instead of finding it daunting, think of it as a page of possibility. It's like Schrodinger's cat. Your story is currently everything. It can be anything. How exciting! Now, go and make a bloody mark on a piece of paper. Oh, and if you want my video on age ranges, I'll link it in the cards above. Cece Moore says, what's holding them back is finding the right illustrator. Well, you need to do some research for this and also for finding a proofreader and an editor if you're going to use them and a designer or anyone else you want to work on your story. To find the right illustrator, my first port of call would be Instagram. It's a great resource to find the sort of illustrations that you like. This is where scrolling is good. Use a hashtag to search for the sort of thing that you have in mind and then see if you can contact them and ask if they'd be willing to work on a commission. Or you can see if you know anyone locally, maybe at an art college or from a design team. Please bear in mind though that illustrators often get a raw deal when negotiating payment. Don't expect to pay them peanuts unless you want to get a monkey to do your images. I mean, it might work. And suggesting that you work on it together and share the profits might also work. But in my experience as an illustrator, I would never do that again. 
I once did 18 months of work on a series of stories that came to absolutely nothing. It was a heartbreaking waste of time, although what I will say is it did teach me how to use Photoshop quite effectively, so perhaps it wasn't all so bad. When you have found someone that you like, start with a paid one-off illustration for your book, just to check that you are on the same page, figuratively speaking, as each other. The last thing you want is for them to go off for three months, appear with 32 illustrations and you hate them all. And you still have to pay them. Make sure you are in contact with them for the whole process. As a professional illustrator, they should be used to working like this anyway. Okay, well, that's it for my bunnies under the moon pick and a chat about what's holding you back. If you feel you have any other creative restraints, then let me know in the comments. Next week, I'm looking at creating PDFs for your book to send to print. Until then, I'm off to chew a chihuahua. I will see you next week. Nanu nanu.